uh, this is common with new farmers who are just getting into rearing uh, rabbits and they're making huge mistakes that cost them uh, their farms that lead them into making losses. Uh, we are going to be going over those mistakes and how you can avoid them. Uh, the number one uh, mistake is buying cheap breeds. Uh, so new farmers are trying to find ways to cut a cost and by doing that they end up buying very cheap and low quality breeds. Uh, this is a problem in a way that the start normally defines your success on your farm. So you should be able to start with uh, huge rabbits like this one which you see and very healthy rabbits. We advise that you buy uh, rabbits which are hybrids or purebred rabbits. Uh, local rabbits or indigenous rabbits will not be able to give you good results. So stay away from those ones however cheap they might seem because it's all about the genes. Uh, some people uh, do it this way where they get maybe local rabbits or indigenous rabbits, uh, the females. Then they want to invest into buying uh, a male, uh, which is purebred or hybrid, uh, thinking that maybe uh, this will be able to give them a uh, better results. Uh, buy pure uh, bred rabbits if you can find them. If you can't find them, at least buy hybrids. Uh, those will be able to give you uh, big bunnies and you will be able to get a high uh, growth rate with if you are rearing a hybrid or purebred rabbits. Uh, the second mistake that uh, our rabbit farmers are making is when it comes to breeding uh, the rabbits. So some farmers take the female to the male, which is the right way to do it. But you find some farmers take the male to the female's cage. Our rabbits are territorial. When you do that, they end up fighting, so the male will take a lot of time trying to familiarize uh, himself with the cage where you have taken him. So by doing so, you find that your rabbits are not breeding. So the correct way is take the female, and this is a female, uh, which we are going to pick and take to a male. Uh, we want to be uh, crossbreeding this one, so I want first to rest it there. And we are breeding her with this uh, beautiful checkered giant buck. So you pick your female and take it to the to the male's cage. And then you stand there to, to see how the rabbits are breeding. You see that uh, he's lifting for him. And there we have got one successful uh, breeding. Uh, you confirm that by seeing the male are falling to the side. Uh, when the male falls to the sides, uh, it means that they have uh, met successfully. Uh, stand there and watch uh, the entire process. Uh, don't leave your female in the male's cage for days like new farmers are trying to do it or how farmers are, other farmers are advising uh, people to do it that by doing so your rabbit is going to give birth to many babies. So just watch once you have a three follow-offs, that is a successful breeding. You go ahead and book uh, the, uh, the, the date of breeding and on day 28, you provide a nest box for your bunny because it's going to deliver or around day 30 or day 35. In between there, it will be giving you new bunnies. So this leads us to the next uh, mistake that farmers are, are making. Uh, this is to do with record keeping. Uh, some farmers are not doing a proper record keeping. Uh, and in rabbit farming, you can't really do much if you're not keeping records. Now that we have bred uh, the other rabbit, you see that whenever you breed your rabbit, you have to keep record of which doe, uh, which is this one in cage 31, and which buck bred it. The buck was in cage 15, and it was served on the 16th of August, and we will be giving it uh, a nest box. So you need to keep a record uh, of your rabbit 
and you see that uh, this is another giant chinchilla uh, which we have here on the farm and this is pregnant so you need to keep a record so that you are able to know when you would need to give your rabbit a nest box and when it will be littering if you don't keep these records then you will miss on your rabbit giving birth so that's why you find people finding uh, when your their rabbit has given birth on a wire and all the bunnies have died uh, because they forgot to take record when they bred the rabbit and they don't know so they don't know when the rabbit is supposed to be littering uh, for them to be able to provide it a nest box uh, the other mistake is is uh, a new farmers starting with too many bunnies uh, people are excited to join rabbit business and they just want to from the word go to start with uh, large numbers of bunnies uh, like if, uh, they want to start right away with a setup like this uh, that can be problematic because when you don't know how to take care of an animal there are risks that your bunnies could end up dying uh, because you don't have experience to in caring for them so you need to start with a few bunnies and then grow as you take care of them uh, bunnies normally we advise that if you are a new farmer you have never raised a rabbit start with at least four female rabbits and one buck and if possible start with bunnies which are still having maybe about two three months for you to be able to breed them uh, you also need to have a little bit of funds because rabbits are prolific uh, breeders and before you know it if you have not planned very well you're going to have a lot of rabbits and when you have a lot of rabbits it means you're going to need a uh, more cage space uh, when you also going to need uh, feeds to give to the bunnies which have been given birth to so you need to start small as you plan your funding because although rabbit farming is not um, capital intensive but you will need to have a plan for for feeding and uh, also constructing of cages uh, the other issue comes with the uh, feeding of the bunnies uh, the rabbit feed should be 80 percent uh, hay because the hay is going to help with the gut uh, of the rabbit the rabbits have a delicate digestive system and if not uh, properly handled uh, this can easily cause you problems to a rabbit like this one here will need only 60 grams of feed in the morning and 60 grams of feed in the evening so if it has bunnies like this uh, what we have done normally is every two small bunnies like this uh, we give uh, 60 grams of feed so if uh, this rabbit will get uh, its 60 grams of feed then these two bunnies will also get uh, 60 grams of feed then this other one will get uh, 30 uh, grams of feed so that's the feed that we can give uh, to this rabbit here with its bunnies if it is just alone uh, like this one here you only need to give it uh, 60 grams in the morning uh, some people overfeed uh, their bunnies and that is where the mistake is and they want them to grow fat and to grow huge the problem is going to come that when you overfeed your dough or your bucks uh, they are going to grow too fat and that is going to affect uh, their productivity uh, when the dough is having a lot of fats around uh, it, her system then she's not going to probably be able to get pregnant and even when she does she's going to find it very difficult to 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 deliver the bunnies on change on on feeding uh, if you intend to shift uh, make a shift or change your rabbit uh, diet please endeavor to do it uh, in uh, small quantities so introduce the new feed uh, in small quantities if you just uh, swiftly change the feeds you are going to disorganize or upset the digestive system of your of your rabbits and that can lead to diarrhea, 
it can lead to uh, digestion upset which kills rabbits in just days so endeavor to introduce any new feed that you give to your bunnies in smaller quantities and gradually increase the the quantities so you can give this alongside the other feeds that your rabbits uh, normally eat uh, the other problem is uh, housing uh, most of the new farmers are making uh, errors when it comes to uh, housing rabbits if you're going to be a commercial uh, rabbit farmer or doing rabbit farming as a business you are going to keep a uh, huge numbers of rabbits and you need to keep them in a cage system uh, what we have is a three-tier cage system and you need to get services of a an experienced a farmer or carpenter to make for you these cages the cages should have a floor uh, of a self a cleaning floor with a discoated mesh a discoated mesh uh, is recommended why because the rabbit urine is corrosive and when you put uh, this other mesh uh, you see this other mesh you even see that the rabbits are burning, uh, uh, are chewing on it and breaking it down so when you use this kind of mesh the rabbit urine is going to break it down so that's why it's recommended that you use this coated uh, mesh because this will withstand the rabbit urine you see that in this cage everything just falls through up to this collection point that is for droppings and for the urine it's collected in here like you can see this has stained this gutter here which was initially uh, not stained like this this is how powerful the rabbit urine is so when you use just this other regular mesh the rabbits are going to chew on it the urine is going to break it down so in the end in the end you find that all the time you're repairing rabbit uh, rabbit cages so ensure that you uh, you tackle this and don't fall victim of this uh, mistake when you're starting up your rabbit farm invest in rabbit structures because that is going to also uh, determine how well uh, your rabbits will stay when you have the cages clean like this your rabbits will not have disease you're also able to collect the droppings which you sell as manure and also collect the urine which you sell as manure as you can see these cages are well clean because we do little to clean the cages because they clean themselves uh, when the rapid the, the rabbits uh, have their droppings they just fall through the cage uh, the other mistakes is with disease control uh, rabbits like any other animal will fall sick and during your cage construction you should plan to have a sick bay uh, what you're looking at here is our sick bay where we isolate any rabbit that is experiencing any uh, symptoms of disease we will keep it and isolate it in these cages here uh, like if you look at this rabbit here you see that this has red eyes and it also has skin disease so this is where we we transfer the sick rabbit and then we are able to to take good care of them as they are in this cage that way you are controlling the spread of disease and this is a must have on a farm because if you don't isolate a sick rabbit uh, it means the disease is going to be spread to the rest of the flock and we before you know it you have a huge outbreak on your farm so assure that when you're planning your farm assure that you're going to have an isolation uh, cage where you only keep those rabbits that need uh, extra attention uh, the other point on biosecurity is uh, yeah, the mistake that people are making is is allowing everyone to come to their farm uh, because they are excited they have these beautiful bunnies around so what they want is anyone who comes to their homestead you know, and anyone who comes across at their farm they allow them to come to the farm and touch their animals without knowing where those people have been uh, whether they have been to another farm so by that way you end up spreading disease 
So ensure that you do not just allow anyone to come to your farm and touch your animal. They should touch your animal if they need, if, if they need, if there is need. So that way you are able to uh, prevent uh, from any calamities that can come from you not taking very good measures when it comes to biosecurity of your farm. If you can manage, uh, put uh, a disinfectant at the entrance of your farm, and then you should be able to disinfect everyone who comes to your farm. And finally, let's talk about the market. Uh, you can't talk about uh, rabbit farming as a business without talking about the market aspect of it. Uh, most of the farmers uh, join this venture when they are thinking or they have been told that this is a money-making project and uh, an easy way or quick way to make money, which is not the case, uh, at least not in the region where I am in Africa, because there is not yet anything like a marketplace uh, in Africa where you collect all your bunnies and, and take them and they give you money. So it means farmers have to be creative and you must know this when you're joining uh, this venture of rabbit farming. Though there is a lot of potential, the industry is growing, people are learning how to eat rabbit meat, uh, doctors are recommending people to eat uh, clean meat, lean meat. So there is a high demand of rabbit meat on the African continent. However, you need to be creative, uh, you need to up up your marketing uh, strategies so that you are able to tap into this uh, growing industry. You can sell rabbit meat, uh, that is for sure, you will get market. We have uh, quite a few restaurants and, and people that we are supplying rabbit meat and we are able to sustain the farm, even just on selling the rabbit meat. We are also selling breeders to other farmers, uh, quality breeders, so if you need any rabbits, please reach out to us and we will be able to hook you up with some quality breeds. You can sell hay uh, to other farmers. Uh, if you happen to have a huge stock of the hay, you are able to sell that to other farmers. You're able to sell uh, rabbit accessories. So there's literally a huge market for rabbits and rabbit products out there. So guys, if you have watched this video this far, please give it a like, a comment, and share this video as that helps us to reach more people. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.